for the U.S. Justice Department for reparations for black people. Now, it's going to be a crazy lineup of witnesses. Some you haven't heard of, or heard from a long, long time. Even from the dead, they're going to come back and testify. So, we want you to participate, react, and let the U.S. Justice Department know that we mean business. You may be seated. Your Honor, this is case 777122. The people of the United States, correction, the African American people of the United States versus the United States Department of Justice. Thank you, Bailiff. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, during this trial, Evidence will be presented to you from which you are the judge. You are the judges of the evidence. And you are also the judges of the facts and not your emotions. The evidence will consist of witness testimonies, other records presented, and also documents. Now, some of this evidence and testimonies may shock you or even upset you, but I ask that you render the verdict in a fair and impartial manner. I also really want you to understand that this is not a criminal case, but a class action lawsuit to determine the monetary suffering of blacks in America. Mm. Attorney Crumman Black, are you representing the plaintiffs? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Attorney Hong, are you representing the Department of Justice? Yes, I am. Well, now we will hear the opening arguments from the plaintiffs. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the preponderance of evidence will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that not only do black lives matter, but black people are entitled to reparations based on the fact that every ethnic group that has been given or done an injustice by this country has been compensated, all but black people. To insinuate that black lives don't matter is blasphemous because you see, the cities in which you live in, we built. The roads in which you drive on, we built. The White House in which the president lives in, yeah, we built that too. <laughs> we built this country for free. We endured 200 and 40 years of slavery. And to insinuate that we are less than a people is unacceptable. Might I add that white supremacy groups in America, many of which hold governmental positions, equate us to being less than human. 
and to that I say, before there was even an America, blacks were kings and queens, not only ruling, but building pyramids that modern day architects and scientists just can't figure out. We come from a long lineage of, loyal, of royalty. And to say that we are dumb and lazy is quite the injustice. Now, the US Department of Justice and Attorney Hong may present the question, are all groups entitled to reparations if they've been given or done an injustice, be it compensation or anything as small as an apology? And I get it. Life just isn't fair. But to that, I automatically rebut and say, not every ethnic group was forced over here by the boatloads, guns drawn by white people. 1.5 million ancestors of our ancestors died whilst chained together in the belly of a putrid boat, only to come over here and build this country for free. So I'm sorry, you just cannot equate us to everyone else. Now today, I will present evidence that will prove my claim unquestionably. I will present expert witnesses. I will also present evidence that will show other groups that have been given reparations based on in corporate injustices given to them by this country. My witness list today will include Harry Tubman, Emmett Till, and Mega Evers. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you, counsel. Now we'll be here from the defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Today, the United States plays a defendant against an accuser who claims for crimes that we've committed, they should be paid for in an amount that was absolutely absurd, $6.4 trillion. No case has ever been settled for that amount of money, let alone to an individual or a people. Now, she says she's going to bring up witnesses. She already mentioned a few who are accused of crimes and are and were at the time considered criminal. They broke the law. Now, of course, these three witnesses will tell their story about their pasts. And we'll see how it goes. Yet, these attorneys will say, excuse me, <coughs> the witnesses, one was even a coyote of some sort, which no matter how we look at it, we do not look kindly on people who smuggle others in this country. She says things were done to a people. Things were done to a people. Things are always done to a people every single day, to this day, in every single country around the world. Now, was it right? The things that the United States did to the African American people? No. It still is not. But in the context of history, and where it was, and where we were at the time socially, and as a collective consciousness, Maybe the details were a bit skewed. They're going to bring a witness right up here. People will say he died. It was murder based on his race. The color of his skin. <laughs> the state will argue that it was no more than a crime of passion. Nothing more than that. The media will dictate their point of view and their account, as they always do, and they are usually proven wrong. 
People will hear a narrative, and you will hear two narratives today, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You're going to hear one narrative of a people who have, or feel, feel they have, been unjustly brought to this country and treated unfairly. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear the second narrative. People at the time and throughout time will do whatever they must do to support their country, to ensure growth, and nonetheless on the backs of individuals who free labor, but growth, exponential growth that makes us who we are today as a world power. And to turn the tables and their backs on us and say that money, or property, or God forbid, both are due, oh, we will see to whom and maybe how. And see if this is a realistic argument, or if this too was brought about due to passion, rather than the reality of how things are. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I look forward to presenting our case. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> Thank you, Counsel. Attorney Black. Yes, sir. Would you present your first witness? Yes. We'd like to call to the stand first and foremost, Harriet Tubman. Hey, what?
was helping people, you know, because I just saw how they was being mistreated. And I saw the atrocities that they suffered and went through for the results of slavery. It's touching. <laughs> so you illegally smuggled individuals throughout the country. No further questions. Thank you. Redirect, Your Honor. Proceed. <laughs> Ms. Tubman, now I would like for you to be very, very clear. Would you please tell the courtroom why you decided to break the law and to spirit slaves away from their slave owners? Ms. Tubman. Uh, I want you to be very, very clear, Ms. Tubman. Yes, sir. I want you to tell the courtroom why you felt it was necessary to spirit slaves away from their slave owners. Okay, I know how to answer that. You see, for many years, I watched my people work so hard out there in the hot sun. And they wouldn't even give them no water. And then I saw the young boys being beaten, beaten, and walked all the time for no reason. You know, but some of them even died, son. And then our beautiful black girls, yes, they was raped up by the master. Raped up? Yes. <laughs> Having babies for the master, and the master wife hated them. Because of their beauty. So you know, yes. Yes, I freed some slaves and I took them through the Underground Railroad. Yes, because I was tired of my people being mistreated. And I said, enough is enough. So if I'm guilty, I'm guilty for freeing my people. Thank you, Ms. Tubman, for your testimony. No further questions. Yes, sir. Ms. Tubman, you may step down. Bailiff, can you please help us? Yeah, because I got to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot of me right there, too.
you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, I do. Please be seated. Your Honor, I would like to apologize for the outburst in the courtroom. You just have to understand that this is a mother and the atrocious nature in which she found her son or received her son back. I mean, any mother would be out of that way. But, uh, sir, please state your name. My name is Emmett Lewis Till. And your age, sir? I'm 14 years old. Please, for the courtroom, I'm sure you have a story for all of us. Would you please let the courtroom know your story, sir? Well, it was the summertime of 1955 in Argo, Illinois, and I've been mighty excited to go see my uncle Moe's right in Mississippi. My mama didn't want me to go down there doing because of the racial tensions I was in accustomed to. So I called my uncle, and he thought it would be a great vacation. So I begged my mother, and she let me go. As, as soon as I got there, he warned me about the racial tensions. And um, I kind of understood, but I wasn't used to that since I'm from the north. And one day, me and my friends were laying around, and bragging and I, I thought it'd be nice to brag about how I have white friends and white classmates. Um, I even showed a picture and we went to go get some candy from Carolyn and Roy Bryant's store and there's so many accounts on what they say took place in there but I don't even remember whistling or saying bye baby to her. On my way home, I was scared because if I told my uncle, I would have gotten in trouble. So I just kept it to myself. But Carolyn Bryan wasn't afraid to tell her husband. Boy Bryan and his brother came to my house a few days later. They threatened to shoot my uncle if he did not let me go out of my bedroom. They came and took me. They tied me up in the back of their truck and they beat me. They beat me until I was unconscious. And then all I can remember doing is saying, I didn't do nothing. That's all I can remember saying. But as soon as I said that, they shot me. They took out one of my eyes and they tied me to a fan in the Tallahatchie River. I was sent back to my mother in a wooden box. My mother had an open casket funeral so everybody could see what they did to me. Her boy, the men were not even found guilty due to her all-white jury. Oh, Emmett, I'm so sorry. So tell me, Emmett, you're 14. What did you want to be when you grew up? Maybe a lawyer, a doctor, a movie star, a professional singer, maybe. But none of that can happen now, can it? They took your life. And they took your life for one reason. Because you were black in America. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of evidence. <laughs> Lack of evidence. Sustain, Counselor. Thank you. Your witness, Counselor. Thank you. You're looking very nice today. Hey, now. Um, Counselor. I'm giving honest counsel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Till, that, God, that was quite a story. You really have him just coming up here giving great stories. Let me ask you something. You're uh, you're from up north, correct? Yeah, Illinois? Yes, sir. 
Uh huh. And you were so excited. You were so excited. You go down south, all down old Mona, Mississippi, get to see old Uncle Moses right, weren't you? Yep. Yes, you loved it, didn't you? Now, didn't your mama, gosh, didn't she tell you that the rules in the south were a little bit different than the ones in the north? That there was a code of conduct that you had to follow? Yes, sir, she did. Yes, sir, she did. And is it true that you were in the south and you were with kids and you were showing them a picture of you with your white classmates? Is this true? Yes, and you were bragging. You were bragging that's not how that you were with you were friends with white kids no. up north. You were bragging, Emmy, weren't you? No, I was not. Your honor! Your honor, I object. He is counsel. badgering this witness. Keep it moving, counsel. Oh, I intend to. Let's cut to the chase, Emmett. Did you or did you not whistle at a married white woman when Miss Carolyn Bryant, knowing full well the rules in the South after your mother told you, after your uncle told you, knowing that the rules in the South, you whistled at that white woman. Mr. Till, control yourself. Let me remind you that you are under oath. Now, earlier you stated that and they came right into your own facility. They took you out! They took you out! And they came out and they shot you for fun! Is that what they did? Did you hit somebody off that day? Did you? What did you do? No one just comes into someone's house takes them out and shoots them for fun, Emmett! I don't see what you do that way! What are you talking about? Please, enlighten me. 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 Please, I was shot. First of all, I was beaten. Then shot. I was murdered. And no men that even get any charges, they were off not guilty. But you knew. You knew that the rules in the South were different from those in the North. Your mother told you. Your uncle told you. But you didn't listen, did you? Because you're a 14 year old girl. Yourselves accordingly in this courtroom, I'll be clear. Now, if 
there aren't any more questions for this young man. And Emmett, you may sit down. Baylor, help him, please. Your Honor. Earlier, I placed into evidence a tape of Emmett Till's mother stating her accounts of what happened when she had to view her son. Also, there have been evidence submitted as well that Carolyn Bryant has recently stated that everything that she said happened was a big lie. Your Honor, what is this new evidence? I have no prior knowledge of it. The counsel is, knows that. should not be admitted. This is highly irregular, Ms. Brown. I understand, Judge. I understand. But I had to. I would have admitted it earlier, but I had to ensure the authenticity of it. It's true. Go take a look for yourself. <laughs> Seems like she gave alternative facts. <laughs> Tricks, don't you? <laughs> Counselor! Counselor! You will return that as received.
truth. So help you, God. Please be seated. Sir, will you state your name for the record, please? Medgar Evers. And your age, sir? 37. Can you tell us what happened that day? Can you please tell us your life purpose? Let us know everything that led up to that horrible day of your death. Sir, please let the court know your story. I was considered a single rights activist. Mississippi born, yet killed by Brian Beckham. Yeah. Because I chose to fight segregation in the university, caused a certain group of people to not exactly like me. A veteran of the World War, yeah, too, I could fight for them. But for me to be respected or even considered equal, I never received from them. I was born Medgar Wiley ever. But yet to a certain group of people I'll always be referred to as Nick. College born, educated, field worker of the group, and I chose to fight for voters registra registration for my people. Miley, activist in her own right. My brother Charles, Merrill elect to my birthright. I went in college, Alcorn for that matter, graduated, even class president for that matter. Simply put, her and I had three children. It was Daryl, Raina, and Medgar Van Dyke Evans. We moved to a community built by those so-called niggas. For a long time, we fought first secretary in the field for the NAACP. My brother and I fought for the RCNF. We wanted economic rights. We wanted access to facilities and all other amenities that come with desegregated societies. Then on that day, in that driveway, when Raina watched me, and she waved me on my way. One shot in the back through my heart, that's when I went down. Then they took me to a hospital in a town in Jackson. Yet in the beginning, I was refused. Was it because of my color or because of my actions? My family gave up a long conversation for me to get in. Now you tell me, is that grounds for reparation? Thank you, Mr. Evers. We appreciate your testimony this day. If you're witness counselor. Thanks. Making 
them seem like a bigger deal than they actually were? Bigger deal? How dare you? Answer the question. I already answered your question. The money was only ours to be made. So it's our decision to decide how those dollars are spent. Educating my people for self-righteousness? Self-righteousness. Great. Now, that sounds very exclusive, Mr. Evers. Whoa! I don't think I can get in because I'm white. Sounds like an all-blacks club to me. Sounds prejudiced to me. Could it be said that you're prejudiced, Mr. Evers? He's prejudiced. <laughs> you ask him, I'm prejudiced. Absolutely. We talk about equal rights. I was murdered by a man called Brian Beckman, who was the member of a white citizen council. Now you tell me, was I allowed in that group? And you believe that boycotts leading to wild riots is not against the law? No, it's not. The riots were not my fault. The riots were not by my people. The riots were because we chose to spend our hard-earned dollars in our community. Now, if you or anybody like you didn't like that, the riots were incited by your people, no. not mine. My white people. Yes. Your people. Please, who are your people? Your people, you tell me. My people's all people. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mentor, let me ask you this. If, first off, it sounds like you just cleansed your hands of the riots. Kind of like Pilate and Jesus or something. But, second off, if there's nothing criminal, you know what I find funny? When white people do the same thing, black people call for us to go behind bars. Nothing further, Your Honor. to say here. My witnesses speak for themselves. But I believe that we can all agree that this system was never meant to better us or to make us more of a united force, but to hold us down. I could have brought anyone up on here up and, and examined them. Any one of us. We all have stories. We know people who have been done wrong. This digs deep into our hearts and our souls. I know that these witnesses have touched each and every one of you. We're only asking for $6.4 trillion. Those are pennies to the United States of America. We're owed that. All of the people who have slain, been slain, murdered, raped, beaten for no reason at all. Shot with their hands raised. Mothers losing their sons. We 
can't even sell CDs or cigarettes. Half of us with tail light. A regular traffic stop without mysteriously coming up dead. If I had to get in police custody, I did not commit suicide. So ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask that you dig deep into the pits of your soul and rule in favor of the African American race. You already know what you need to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.
the honor and members of the jury. Yes, we have paraded these, as Attorney Hong mentioned, colorful witnesses. And he would hope that you would believe that they are criminals and that their testimonies do not warrant the Department of Justice to pay reparations to the African Americans, when in reality, these folks were just fighting the injustices that were unduly set upon them and a criminal justice system that did not treat them fairly. Now let's look at these allegations of breaking the law which is the whole basis of Hong's defense. Now, you heard Harriet Tubman state that she spirited slaves away by way of the Underground Railroad because she could not witness the injustices that were happening to her people by the slave owners. Emmett Till, said he was innocent, but he was murdered, body mutilated, shot. And when those men went to trial, they were found not guilty. But then, years later, Carolyn Bryant admitted that he did not do anything wrong. She lied! Now, how alternative is that? And Medgar Evans was murdered just because he told his people to keep their money and to spend it in the African American communities to show and build economic growth. Not criminals, but made out to be by an unjust criminal justice system. Yeah. Now, Hong also stated this uh, whole idea of other countries being biased toward their own people. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. But he failed to realize that there were other countries that paid reparations for the mistreatment of their own. This country! had paid reparations to groups like the Ottawa's of Michigan, the Sioux Indians of South Dakota, and Japanese Americans. Millions, even billions of dollars. But what about the African Americans, huh? The one group which had been mistreated by the justice system for year, more years than all three of these groups put together. Yes. And they still are being mistreated yes. to this day, yes. which has brought rise to the Black Lives Movement. Yes. But isn't this an interesting dynamic? Now, people would want us to believe that all lives matter. That very well may be. But if all lives matter, how come all lives are not stopped and frisked? Yeah. How come all lives are not being stopped for minor infractions like a busted tail light? Or selling something as simple as a loose cigarette, yeah. or DVDs, yeah. or even shot with your hands raised up in the air. Oh, the uh, dynamic of this country, the dynamic of this country is really, really interesting. Very, very interesting how they would go on and make us believe that these infractions were worth all of the trouble that has been put upon them. The Department of Justice has been biased toward African Americans 
for many, many years. Many years. And it is time that they paid reparations to them for the injustices that they implemented against them. Oh, and if you're going to say all lives matter, why, oh why do you exclude black folks from that? Black lives matter too. And if you're going to pay reparations to groups for the injustices that you implemented on them, then you got to do it for the African American school. Especially for the fact that we built this country on our backs. Please discount harm, rather lame explanation as to why African Americans do not deserve reparation. But you believe in real justice. I believe in real justice, and so do everybody else. I ask you to find in favor of the plaintiffs in the amount of $6.4 trillion. Oh! And one last thing. African Americans are very, very aware that all lives matter. But over 2,000 years ago, a man of color died on a Friday and woke up on a Sunday.
great or what? Come on, put those hands together. How many of you are wondering what the verdict is going to be? <laughs> the people against the United States of America. It's something that the Lord gave me about a year and a half ago. I was, the bishop was in Richmond, Virginia doing the show. And I saw that they killed this young man in Minnesota with his fiance and his child in the car. And it brought tears to my eyes. And I said at that point, I said, we've marched and we've, we, we've protested. What can I do? Because it could be me. It could be my son. And the Lord gave me this particular vision. And I sat back there doing, doing this show. It's the first show that I haven't been in myself in, in 12 years, 167 cities of touring. And actually, I got a chance to see this message. And let me tell you, I cried. Because we're in a serious battle. But thanks be unto God who's given us the victory. Look at somebody real quick and say, you're not going to lose. He guaranteed us the victory. Oh, come on, you can pray. Now, we're going to have about a 10-minute intermission, give you a chance to go get some refreshments, use the restroom or whatever, and come back. And let me tell you, the second, the second act is crazy because it's a jury deliberation. And feel free to engage yourself in the process because actors feed off of audiences. And if you don't agree with something, let them know. <laughs> there may be some things that are, that's going to be said that, that make you mad. But, but that's what it's all about, intelligent dialogue. Amen? Amen. So we're, we're, we're so excited. Um, as you're leaving, um, this, this song comes to mind. It says, If I can help Somebody as I
We're going to interview Bishop Jordan. We want to see what his take is on this trial so far and what he thinks the burden should be. You all give it up for Bishop Jordan. Wow. Um, have you been blessed? Yes. I think we're looking at 400 years of slavery here in a system. We're looking at the years of slavery we've had in the system. It's amazing that we are in a climate that people are saying to keep up where you had the ball and chains on your ankles until liberation came and then you're told to keep up. I am looking for the six point four trillion with interest. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Y'all give it up to Bishop. You've seen him on BET for years. Let's see who else on my hand. <laughs> Come on up, this young man right here. your name and tell me what you think about this trial that's happening here. My name is Ricardo Thomas. And as I was talking to a sister here, she said, watch this trial. Very fresh. And I do hope that all of us come to ourselves and our senses especially they're looking at a young man for a while and said, Lord have mercy. Here is one young man in this audience and he just like a young man. It's my concern is how many of us black Just been in my head. 
and uh, so now it's a reality, and uh, it's it's a little different because I've always done just church for gospel plays, but this is a play for everybody, yeah. and uh, and so it's 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 what, what you think about? It? Well, as I told you when I came up to you, I said, why isn't this on Broadway? This needs to be on Broadway. And I feel that it is so important for us as a people, it's important for generations that have, as you, sir, have seen, have been here, but it's also important for the youth. The youth needs to know because they are not getting this in the education system in this country. So we need to whatever we have to do to get this on Broadway, we need to get it there and we need to support the production. God bless you. Sister what church do you My church, church is New Jerusalem Worship Center. number of us here. Our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Calvin Wright. And we um, had some of um, your group at our church and here also today we have the executive minister with us. I am one of the associate ministers and we are just so proud. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Pastor Rice is a very good friend of mine. I preached for him several years ago. And uh, I w also want to give a shout out to Bernice Green, Our Time Press. You all give her some love because it's the biggest black newspaper in Brooklyn. And that's, that's my buddy, that's my friend. Thank you so much. Listen, this is, this is about to get crazy up in here. Somebody say, up in here, up in here. So I want you to give it up again for Act Two of Black Lives Matter. Come on. Yes. 
children were taken from us. In this land, we worked and did the work that they would not or could not do for themselves to the point that our women breastfed their own children that they would not feed. No, we ain't shiftless and we ain't lazy. But reparations, it's about time. And it is my prayer that this group of people can get it right. Not for us, but for the millions who have gone before us. I would like to be part of this jury, because I'm the oldest. And I'm a professor of African American Studies and maybe the Evans University. Come on now. And also, I'm a little. Oh, <laughs> I got to do it. I agree. I think if you was hanging out with Harry Tubman in a I trust you. I trust you. You only know. Hey, hey. Guys, I think I should be the foreman. I mean, I'm 22 and I am the youngest. Well, I think I should be the foreman because I'm a medical doctor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So what? I'm a school teacher. If anybody should be foreman, it should be me. But I'm a housewife, and I have to juggle taking care of three children. So I think I should do it. I'm an engineer, guys. No, I should be the foreman. I'm a pastor. People are used to following pastors. No. I am a social worker. And guess what? I know about everybody around this table better than you know yourself. What better person to be the fourth person than me? school. I 
December the 60s and affirmative action and the civil rights laws, you could have been going to school. All you need to do is get up off your um, um, um your chair. <laughs> do it. There you go. He went to school. Just because you went to school, that's a beautiful thing. I understand. I understand that you went to school. But I tell you one thing. For us, we didn't have this opportunity like you. Sure did. We, you know, and, we, and what we want to do right now, we want to get this together right now and prove to you that we can do what we need to do. That's right. That's right. And you know what? And you still, they still kill a black folk. And we still not get there. Hold up. Hold up. We still not get put that on us. You're the one killing black folks. I know about black on black crime. What does black on black crime have to do with this case? Exactly. And that may be true. But it also has to do with economics and poor living conditions that were perpetuated by whites. They made sure we were poor. Yeah. Yeah.
like that during that time in history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were killing much worse than that. That's right. They were burying a lot of black folk. Burn a lot. They were burning black folk alive. Right. They was born. They was made. And yes, they even raped them. Constantly. Can't you see they even killed? Amen. And then years later they turned around and killed Mandy Evans. Wow. Now can you understand why Harry Tubman did what she had to do? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Criminals. Criminals. You All three of them. Criminals. Did you hear what Attorney Hines said? What he said? They all broke the law. They were all wanted. When they died, they were criminals. Now you want the Justice Department, the one that's all about the law, to give up a whole bunch of money based on the testimony of criminals? I don't think so. All Matthew Evans trying to do was get blacks to spend money in their own communities. Yeah. And didn't you hear Harriet say she did what she had to do because of the atrocities during her time period? And then the Tim only went down south to have some fun with his friend while he was in his open in Mississippi, just only to home. have his mutilated, waterlogged wow. body returned wow. back to his mother in a freaking wooden box. She 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 had no. And did we have a testimony of that white woman who lied? Who's uh, like you white people? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're the one who are the real friend. Here we go. Oh, it's you. always us white people. Some All your talking is coming after the white folks. I'm not hiding nothing from you. Oh, me? You. Oh, you. That poor boy, that mother was devastated. I couldn't imagine any of my children going away and coming back to me to like that. Oh, it's all right. Well, it's all right. Imagine how many of you black. Had to go through that same people. <laughs> Look throughout history, and you want to talk about criminals? This justice system is criminal. <laughs> the criminal justice system was not set up to serve everybody faithfully in this country. Just look what's going on today. You can look throughout history and see all the injustices were done to African American people. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, to do something about that. Thing. Yes, indeed. Well, well, that's the um, way I mean, there were there were so many. Um, remember Tulsa, Oklahoma? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Oh, a part of Tulsa in 1921 was called yes. Greenwood. Mm -hmm. Green and owned by blacks. That's right. This and that's right. Right. Yeah, they had their own showers, yeah. their own stores, transportation, including their own airport, hospital, school, everything. And then one of less incident of the white folks burned it down.
Somebody wants Toby Nell to trust white people. Why? Because they'll use like a five to minute. Oh, yeah. 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 Y
Hallelujah. The Negro singer. The Negro gospel. Yes. yes. Oh, I like that.
Yeah. Reparations can be paid with money and or land. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And guess what? And guess what? Those three witnesses only touched the iceberg of all the millions of people that are here. And you want to tell me that they don't deserve it? It's a no brainer. No brainer. I believe that's fair. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 maybe not to you. Okay, I know it's fair. Maybe not to you. <laughs> okay, 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 listen. I believe it's time to go, okay? All in favor?
Honorable William J. Jennings presiding. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Americans versus the Department of Justice. We have found the plaintiffs in the amount of six point four trillion dollars. <laughs>
Sister Nance. This is this is her father, biological father. Wonderful, beautiful girl. Um, Martin, come here, Martin. Say it loud. So give, give, give Jerry Brunson. <laughs> and then Tony. Tony is, is one of the lead singers in the group. He's a natural. You, you got to see him. If you haven't seen Family Mess, you got to see him in Family Mess. <laughs> Plays the Deacon. Great job, sir. Now, my nephew and niece, they're all the way here from Jacksonville, Florida. Come on up, Renita. Come on up. She, she played uh, Mamie Teal. This is a well-accomplished young lady who just graduated with a real doctorate degree. <laughs> and uh, just so happy you and Ryan were able to come tonight. And come on up here, Alicia. Yeah. Also want to give a shout out to this great sound company in, yeah. in Brenton on Keys. Every church, every pastor, every patron, if you saw it in the newspaper, our Times Press, uh, Bernice and Dave. Um, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I don't, I don't see any other pastors here that I, that I know in the audience, but I do want to thank again, Bishop. Who? Delicate. All right, all right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. And again, thank Bishop. Okay, okay, all right, all right, Pastor, thank you, thank you. Uh, Pastor Bishop Nelson also was a great support, and, and we want to thank him as well. Amen. Uh, Alicia, Our, Pastor Archibald from Staten Island, give him some love. Alicia and I have been married for 21 years, or uh, 22 years. Amen. And all of our plays we've written and, and, and directed together. This is the first play that I've written and directed by myself. And uh, so that was, a, you know, a, 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 it's different. <laughs> so anybody who knows us with two strong personalities. But 
<laughs> but uh, thank you so much tonight. You did such a wonderful job. Let's have your show. And I uh, allow Brittany to come in and help co-direct um, the jury uh, scene. Which did you love that scene? What was that? Like? That was deep. So it's all about working together. Now everybody say Manhattan. Manhattan. Now how can we go to Manhattan? This, these are some things that I need you to do and Alicia's gonna take us out. Um, we need everybody, to, who's on Facebook? Let me see the show of hands that's on Facebook. Okay, please go on Facebook and like Black Lives Matter 2. Black Lives Matter T-O-O. -O. And and put a comment on it, what you thought about the show, what you would like to see um, the show do, where you would like to see the show go. Also, another thing you can do is we're having, we had it filmed tonight. You can help us by pre-ordering your DVD. Yeah. Somebody say $20. $20. Is educational, motivational, yeah. and inspirational. Take this moment with you, share it with somebody who didn't come tonight, but most of all, it helps us go to the next place. It's only $20 to sow into something that um, is going to bless somebody, and if it bless you tonight, please see us. Philip is at the table. He has a, 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 a tie on, a great tie, um, uh, kind of tall, short guy. <laughs> <laughs> Good guy. Please see him. Sign up and get that ticket. If you did not get your playbill tonight, also you can sign up for that. But but please help us to continue to do what we do. It's a stretch when we do small shows, but um, it, it's funny. The family mess is sold out in New Jersey. Um, just practically already, um, as well as. And Trenton, we just started there. That'll be sold out in two weeks. And that's a play that makes you laugh. But it's not as educational as this play. And uh, it, it was harder to, to push this one than it was that one. But the devil is a liar. We need your help. We need your help. So please see us outside. There's also, if you want to take pictures, um, there's also a backdrop. We'd love to take pictures. The cast would love to take pictures with you. And uh, I believe it'll be a uh, 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 continue, continue blessing. Post them on Facebook. Uh, Manhattan, our, our, our goal for that is June the 28th, 29th, 30th, um, and up to July the 1st. So that's what we want to do. Please help us out. Thank you so much again. And, and you all keep us in your prayers. Here's at least. Oh. You're, you're finding our time for us. <laughs> Everyone stand and we're getting ready to go. We're just going to sing a little song, lift every voice and sing together. Y'all help us out. Come on, put those hands together. Wait, Oh, we just want to, I just wanted to say Bishop Jordan is our friend and that's our answer to Matt Hatch sitting right there in the front row. <laughs> I'm going to be talking to you bitches so we can discuss Manhattan at your place, okay? And the Zoe Ministries, God bless you.
directors and everyone that played a part in this. God, we thank you for this anointed cast. God, we pray for everyone that came that paid their monies to come and see this educational tool that will be beneficial for many to come. God, spread the word in the name of Jesus. Send your word in the name of Jesus concerning this production that it will go forth all over this country. We bless it now in the name of Jesus. We proclaim it. We declare it. We declare it in Jesus. Jesus, name we pray. Amen. Hugs and 